In this video, we are going to uncover the underutilized underdog and that is reference point. And if this puts you off, I'm going to share with you some awesome tips and tricks that will not only blow your mind but also will be very useful and handy. Whether you're a photographer, a graphic designer or even an artist. From adjusting, resizing, rotating and aligning to getting rid of those long moments and hours that you spent using the arrow keys getting that pixel perfect all this and more with real world examples. So without any further ado, let's get started. If you're a photographer or a designer or even an artist, you might have heard about the rule of thirds, right? Now, what does the rule of thirds say? You might already know this, but the rule of thirds says that one of the part of rule of thirds say that if you divide an image into three parts, both horizontally and vertically, as you can see in this, the attention goes in these intersections of the lines that divide the image into three. Now, some of you love rule of thirds so much you want your images to be aligned and follow the rule of thirds no matter how you crop it. For example, let me just import one image, say this one, let me just drag and drop it into Photoshop. Now, you want to create an image of this size, 1920 into 1080, maybe for a thumbnail, maybe for your desktop and you want to adjust image to this screen size, to this canvas size. Alright, so what do you do? usually do? You press and hold shift, okay, and make it bigger, right? Like this and you adjust. But suppose you want to follow the rule of thirds, then what you do? Okay, so you want his eye, his right eye to be in one of these intersection points. Now, if you're wondering how did I get this rule of thirds grid in Photoshop, all you have to do, you have to go to edit, Preferences, okay, you can get to preferences here. If you're using a Mac, it would be under Photoshop, then preferences, okay, preferences, and then grids, guides, okay, click on that, guides, grids, and then change the subdivision to three and make sure this is changed to percent, okay? Grid line every hundred percent, check this, and subdivision equals three, all right? Then you'll have these grids that will help you align your image according to rule of thirds. Suppose you want his eye to be just in this area, in this intersection point. Now you wanna resize and fit the image accordingly. If you press Control T, that shows up the transformation tool. Now, we can press and hold shift and make it bigger, but if I do that, if we do that, what's gonna happen, the eyes are going to disalign again. Instead, what you can do, let me press enter and let me go back one stage. Now, press and hold control or command T. Now watch this, this is called the reference point. Now, this is taking the center of the image as a reference point. We don't want that. We want the eye to act as a reference point. So all you have to do, all you have to do, move the reference point to the eye, make sure it is already fit and aligned straight in the middle. I don't know whether you can see it or not. Okay, so I have fixed the reference point there. Now you zoom out and now you press and hold shift and then drag it. Again, it's not aligning, you know why? Because if you press and hold shift and drag, it will make it larger. It will take the reference point into account, but it will make it larger diagonally, not from the middle of the reference point. So let me hit enter again and let me go back again. Press control T again, then move the reference point to his eye. Now press shift and alt. Okay, if you're using a Mac, shift and option. Now make it larger, watch, watch. I remains in the same place, remains at the same place and we can make it as big as we want but the eye is still on the intersection point. Isn't that amazing? Now I use the same method to create one of my recent thumbnails which is right here. All right, so, so this is one of the things that you can do. Also, this teaches us one more thing. So let's go back one more step and have a look. If I press Control T, okay, if you want to make the image larger from the center, what do you do? Okay, it's easy, very easy and if you want to keep everything in center, it's gonna be very easy and fun. Alright, so if you pasted your image into Photoshop and it's something like this and you want to put things in perspective and put things in center, all you have to do, you have to make sure that you go to view and make sure snap is checked. Okay, click on snap, make sure the snap is checked, then move your image 
and it will snap to center. It has snapped to center horizontally. Now you need to snap it to center vertically. So you take it up and it snaps to center. When you see two cross lines, okay, when you see a plus sign, then it has completely snapped to center. And when it does, leave it. Then press, let's zoom out a little, Control or Command minus, Control T, and then press and hold, Shift and Alt, and then drag. Woo! Watch, it transforms from center, all right? Now if I just press Shift and not Alt or Option, and then I drag, it will take reference point into account, but it will transform diagonally. Watch, even if I move the reference point and press and hold, Shift and drag, nothing happens. Now, how is it taking the reference point into account? When you rotate it, you'll see. Watch, it's rotating from the reference point. It's taking into account, but for transformation, press and hold, shift and alt, all right? So let's move on to our next example. As you can see in this example, this is my business card and I recently designed it, but it looks crowded. And you know that one of the biggest and the most important rules of typography is that your type needs some space to breathe. So it's crowded. We need to make it a little smaller. We need to add a little padding, a space, on all, this, all the four sides. All right, to do that, press and hold, make sure that the text layer is selected, whatever your layer is in your image, make sure the whole of this is selected, Control T. The same thing, press and hold, Shift, Alt, and drag it. Now it looks a little more decent and professional, isn't it? Before we move on to the next example, just remember two things. If you press just Shift, it will transform in proportion, but it will not take reference point into account when you're just transforming, not rotating, okay? If you press Shift and Alt, it will take reference point into account and treat that as a center point and then transform it accordingly, okay? So let's move on to the next example and this is about rotation. All right, so this is like one of the pages of the magazine or something. I have written one heading and this does not mean anything and I want to insert an image. All right, so one of the best ways to insert free stock photos into Photoshop is using the plugin called Pexels. So this is the plugin called Pexels and if you want to know more about it, go ahead and check the video out right here. It's completely free, guys, so you can use it. All right, so I love this image. I can search for image from here and I can save images that I have already liked. So I want to insert this image so all I have to do I have to just click on it and it will directly insert that image as a layer so as you can see this has just been inserted and let's close it and this is above all the layers so I need to take it back maybe to the bottom all right so this looks cool kind of thing but I don't want this what I would like to do I would like to place the handle just below art so that uh, as if it looks that the handle is painting the art. I don't know what it's called. It's called a paintbrush handle. I don't know. I'm sorry about it. All right. So I want to just keep it just beneath art. Now, I want to make this parallel to this. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? I want to make this line, okay, this line parallel to this line, okay, parallel to art. This is like this right now. I want to get it this way. So. I've got one corner of the handle just touching the A, okay? Now I want to rotate it to make it parallel. Can you guess where I'm trying to go with this? All right, now let's move this reference point to this point where the handle touches A. I don't know what it is called, so just I'm just going to call it handle. Correct me in the comments below, all right? So now once you have moved it, now you rotate it and watch the magic, okay? Woo! <laughs> All right, isn't this amazing? Okay, so it's nearly getting parallel to this. Now, you wanna make the handle bigger? Remember the first example? What did we do? Press and hold, shift and alt, okay? Now watch, okay, it got a little, way too bigger. All right, now, let's make it bigger. Okay, now it's looking amazing. All right, it's looking arty, isn't it? It's cool. You can always adjust it if you want. Now, as you can see, the text is kind of eh. We can drag it somewhere here. You can always confine the text in a shape. Do you want to know how to do this? Uh, well, that's not for this tutorial, but let's let's do it. It's very simple. Let's just learn it. All right, so take a you know pen and then draw the shape you want. Maybe this shape. Okay, whatever shape, it doesn't matter. Okay, I drew the shape. Now, take the text tool. Okay, let's copy this text. Okay, let's copy this text. Take the text text tool, all right. Click on this. As you move the text tool over the shape, you see this 
text tool with a circle light click on it and just paste it right here and there you have it it's in a shape now if you hate the shape you can always go ahead and turn off the shape layer and there you go it's in a shape right now okay so we want to turn this off and there you have it in a shape isn't this amazing all right watch Similarly, sometimes in your images, you have certain lines that you want to align to other lines. Make sense? No? All right, let's look at this example. All right, so think of it like this. Suppose I was about to write something on the left hand side that I didn't. I was too lazy to do it. And as you can see in this example, this line is not straight enough and you want to straighten it. And you want to align it with a line which is straight. For this example, I'll simply drag on a guide. Okay, so if you cannot see rulers, these are rulers. If you cannot see them, press Control R. Okay, it removes the rulers and again makes them appear again. All right, so Control R or Command R if you're using a Mac. Once you see the rulers, drag a guide from the ruler. Okay, from here, and as soon as the guide touches the line, stop. Okay, so it's touching the right side of the line and it's not touching the left hand side. So same thing that you have to do control T make sure that layer is selected move the reference point to that area and to that point and voila there you go hit enter and it has already been straightened all right now it's not just about straightening it's about aligning okay to whatever line you want doesn't necessarily have to be a straight line okay so let's move on to the next example this is a thumbnail for one of my previous tutorials and uh, that I created and suppose I this this was about Photoshop workspace and suppose I want to add the word Photoshop here okay messed up Photoshop or Photoshop messed up whatever so I'll select the type to and then click anywhere and just type Photoshop okay and let's change the font to Railway. It's one of my favorite fonts. All time favorites. All time favorites. And I use it every single time. All right, let's change the color. Okay. So, okay. Now, I want this to be aligned with this. So, what do I do? The same thing. Make one corner of the text. Touch it. Control T. Move the reference point to that corner. And move it. There you go. Okay. You get the idea right before we move on to the next example just remember one thing when you have to rotate an object using something as a reference point something as an axis okay earth revolves around an axis right remember something as an axis move the reference point to that axis and then rotate but there's one gotcha and the gotcha is the problem is all right once you hit enter once you have made changes once you hit enter that reference point is gone you cannot get it back in that position. What do I mean by this? For example, if I go back and if I press Control T and I move the reference point to one corner and then I rotated it and I hit enter and again I press Control T, that reference point goes away from the corner. And again, even this, even the transformation to selection area changes, all right? So keep that in mind. Be very careful while doing that. All right, so let's move on to the next example. And it's all about alignment. As you can see, this is the thumbnail from one of my recent tutorials about matching composites using curves. And this is one of the coolest things to do in Photoshop. So go ahead and check it out right here, but after this tutorial. All right, so a couple of things before we head over to alignment. Now couple of shortcuts you need to remember press and hold control or command and apostrophe you know what apostrophe is if you don't it will be on the screen right now all right control and apostrophe this makes the grids visible press it again control or command and apostrophe grids invisible control or command then semicolon or colon makes the guides visible press it again makes the guide invisible now if I turn on the guides watch everything is aligned and this is one of the biggest and the, one of the most important rules of design is that try to be aligned when possible also rule of typography okay it gives a sense of order and gives you a peace of mind when you look at it okay so this is a useless guide so this just move it all right so if you look at this using curves is aligning with h-i-n-g and also this logo is aligning with v-e-s 
right? So before we head over to this, I'm gonna give you a pro tip, all right? So if you cannot find on which layer this using curves is, instead of fiddling with the layers panel and trying to find that out, you can always make sure that auto select is checked, okay? And click on this text, and that layer will be automatically selected. Suppose this was not aligned, okay? So let me de-align or disalign. I don't know what the word is, but it's not aligned now, okay? Now I wanna align it again. So one of the first things that you should keep in mind while aligning things is to zoom in, okay? That's important. Controller command plus. Now, okay, pro tip, if you want to move while you're zoomed in, Press and hold space bar and watch the cursor changes to a hand and then you move. Leave the space bar, it's gone, okay? Now, you set it to this and then control T and press and hold shift and let's make it smaller, okay? This is adjusted, but when you do that, watch what happened, watch. This actually got out of this line. Why? Because the reference point was at the center. All right, so if this was too big, let me show you something. If this was too big, this is not much visible right now, but if this was too big and you adjust it to something like this, and then you made it smaller, watch, watch what, ha what will happen. Okay, this is actually very big. All right, so if I try to adjust this to this, watch how much of it is not aligned now. So instead what you have to do when you're doing such kind of work, Suppose we align on the left, and then it's too big on the right, okay? So you aligned on the left, then move this reference point, not to the corner, okay? There's a space between the corner and the text, but to this line. Then you make it the size you want, okay? And there you go it stays at the same place, all right? Don't forget, okay, don't forget, I'm gonna repeat this to you again. Don't forget to press Shift and Alt. Just Shift won't do, might not do. Be double sure, press Shift and Alt, or Option, and then drag in, okay? So that's pretty much all about a reference point and how it is the most underutilized underdog. And once you know it, it's gonna be very handy, very accurate, and your life will become so much more easier. I hope this video helped you, and if it did, make sure you hit the like button, and also don't forget to subscribe, and not just subscribe, click on that bell so that you don't miss anything. I'll see you guys in my next one. Thank you so much for watching. Till then, make sure that you keep creating.